Not since I lost my heart to Sue Storm have I seen such a beauty as the Scarlet Witch. Quote, Namor the Submariner. X-Men Volume 1, Issue 6. Submariner joins the evil mutants. Professor Xavier reads a newspaper article about the Submariner. He wonders whether or not the Submariner is a mutant. While Magneto and his Brotherhood of Evil Mutants are at their new headquarters on an island pondering the same thing. Magneto tries to recruit the Submariner by projecting his actual form under the ocean. Professor Xavier does the same thing from the mansion, but he hides his actual form when he senses Magneto's actual form nearby. Magneto finds Namor's underwater kingdom, but he decides not to approach the Submariner following an outburst that he witnessed. Instead, Magneto approaches one of the other Atlanteans and makes a deal. In exchange for delivering a message from him, Magneto claims that the Atlantean can become the new ruler of Atlantis if the Submariner joins the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Back at the mansion, Professor Xavier informs his students that Magneto is attempting to recruit Namor and that he knows where Nag- Magneto's new base is located. The X-Men board a ship and head out to stop Magneto. Namor is persuaded into meeting with Magneto on their secret island. He is quickly impressed by how the island is run by using Magneto's powers in conjunction with a giant magnet at the center of the island. The X-Men arrive and battle begins amongst the two groups. Look, it's the angel. That means the X-Men are here. They found us. Silence. Don't panic. If the X-Men attack us, it will be their greatest blunder. Here on my home grounds, I cannot be defeated. Magneto, I have a message from Professor X. It concerns the Submariner. It is too late for messages, Angel. I know what your accursed professor is up to, but I found Namor first. Here is a message for X. If you live to deliver it, tell him of my power. He's magnetized the boulders near him, hurling them at me like missiles. It's lucky the professor spent so many long hours on my agility and obstacle dodging practices. Stand aside, Magneto. You make good use of your Madaga talent, but let the Submariner show you what real power is. Magneto, shall I? No, let us see what Namor can do. You fly well, sh- Stripling, but the Samnarina winged feet are a match for any airborne foe. Guess again, Namor. I can outmaneuver you in the air without half trying. Perhaps you can, but what is a good maneuverability when it is pitted against super strength as mine? There, arrogant one, of what use are your wings now? And when I can hurl you so far and so fast that they flatten helplessly against your side. A short distance away, an alarm is sounded. Hank, Angel is heading this way. He needs help. He's coming like a bull. But don't worry, I'll retard his progress. Good work, Nature Boy. Here's a little assist from Iceman to keep you from landing too hard. Nature Boy, here's a little assist from Iceman to keep you from landing too hard. Freezing an impact, the spray of ice which Bobby Drake hurled upwards towards his two partners becomes a makeshift slide, enabling them to reach the ship safely. Sorry, I don't have time to send you a sled, fellas, but I guess you'll figure, forgive me. That was quick thinking, Hank. The professor was pleased. Speaking of the professor, he wants Angel to report to him at once. Magneto destroys the X-Men ships, but they are an ice craft to make it to shore. Cyclops realizes that a giant magnet powers everything, so he tries to destroy it, but Quicksilver attacks before he can do anything. The X-Men subdue Quicksilver, which causes the Scarlet Witch to fear for her brother's safety. Magneto becomes angered with the Scarlet Witch and yells at her. The Submariner realizes the type of man he has allied himself with, so he turns against Magneto and destroys the magnet controls. The X-Men break into the lab so Magneto, Toad, and Mastermind run away. The Scarlet Witch demands that Quicksilver be returned to her, but the X-Men do not comply. The Submariner commands you to obey the female. Set Quicksilver free. Look, you piscatorial pirate. You may be Mr. Big when you're in the greeny deep, but your imperial idiosyncrasies don't impress the X-Men. Fool, it will take more than a fancy vocabulary to stop Prince Namor. And I've got more. I also possess the speed and Jilly, which far exceeds your own. But what good are they against the strength of the Sea Lord? Even your bestial attack cannot affect one whose body is able to withstand the indescribable pressures at the very bottom of the sea. Now, are you convinced that Namor, the first Prince of Atlantis, Imperia of the Deep, Lord of the Seven Seas, is completely invincible? No, as far as I'm concerned, Namor, you only manage to prove that you love the sound of your own voice. The beast is doing his best, but Namor is too much 
much for him. Let's go Cyclops. Not yet, Angel. He can't be beaten by simple frontal attack. We need a plan. Okay, you stay and make plans. I'm going to help our barefoot buddy. Um, ow. Ha, I was expecting you to try this. Clip your wings, Angel. We can't delay no longer. Now both the Beast and Angel are in danger. All right, Samarina. If brute force is all you understand, the X-Men have enough to satisfy you. Now back away. It's our turn to attack. Surrender, Namor. You can't escape my power beam. Do your worst, Cyclops. Unlike my strength, your power blast will soon subside, and I'll finish this charade. Don't underestimate me, Namor. Don't make me use my full intensity. This is your last chance. Namor, try to help me. I must return the favor. I'll use my hex power on the fearless X-Men. No sooner does the Scarlet Witch unleash her uncanny hex than the very stones suddenly loosen under Cyclops' feet and... What? I lost my balance. You had your chance, Cyclops, but now, before you can recover your Yourself, you'll feel the mighty wrath of Namor. Holt! A short battle breaks out and is stopped by Professor Xavier when he brings Quicksilver under his mental control to the Scarlet Witch. Namor decides that he has had enough of fighting for the day, so he starts to head back to his kingdom when he is attacked by Magneto and his giant magnet. The Samaritan overcomes the beating he has taken and destroys the magnet. The X-Men watch as the Samaritan withdraws back to his kingdom, then observe Magneto and the rest of the Brotherhood retreat in their own own jet. Notes. References. Fantastic 427, Avengers 3 and X-Men 4. Cyclops smiles when using an eye blast to prevent the beast from reaching across the table during a shared meal. The angel notes to himself that he is the first time he has seen Cyclops smile in months. In this issue, Jean Grey cooks for the other X-Men, supposedly because the unseen cook of the team has a day off. Quicksilver notes in this issue that he has taken a pledge to guard his sister, the Scarlet Witch. Jean Grey claims that the beast is too heavy to lift telekinetically, despite the fact that she has easily lifted both of him and larger amounts in previous issues. Marvel Girl has a new cat mask to replace the typical X-Men skull cap in order to show off her new hairstyle. Instead of the tease wavy hair, she has iron straight hair, a look that was coming into play in the real world at the time. Artist Jack Kirby was always very conscious to update his character's looks to remain consistent with the times, possibly a carryover experience working in the romantic comic book genre. Namor is established to be a mutant. He was already mentioned as possibly the first known mutant in Fantastic Four Annual 1. At this point in time, Namor was mainly appearing as a recurring character in the Fantastic Four series. Fan appeal in the letter section at the end of the book suggested they would like to see Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch leave Magneto to become good, possibly join the X-Men. The X-Men. This is the first mention of a cook for the X-Men, but one has yet to be Revealed. Iceman uses his ice powers to make a pie a la mode in this issue. Unfortunately, the editors ignored the need for cream when making ice cream, and Bobby would have really one really only eaten ice. Magneto apparently shows telepathic powers in this issue as he sends forth a mental image as an ambassador to Prince Namor. This is the same mental power Professor X uses to look for Namor. It is even stated that Magneto's mind is second in the world only to Professor X capability. There is an error in the speech balloons of page 21. Mastermind Jason Wingrade addresses Magneto as Mastermind. Professor X sailing ship is sunk by Magneto's during the issue. At the finale of the story, the X-Men prepare to leave Magneto's island with seemingly identical sailing ship. A word balloon claims that they are taking Magneto's abandoned ship, but no such ship has appeared before. The word balloon may be covering an error by Jack Kirby. Next issue, X-Men Volume 1, Issue 7. The Return of the Blob.